Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie and today we are back with another da -da. Da -da. So today I'm excited because we have a huge Italian feast filled with pappardelle, bolognese pasta, pappardelle alfredo pasta, shrimp and lobster ravioli covered in a some sort of like spaghetti sauce, okay? And then we have fried ravioli that we're gonna dip into our spinach and artichoke mm. dip. We've got some carbonara pasta, some other sh I don't know what that is, I'm sorry. <laughs> we've got some bread, we have some tiramisu, we've got a chocolate layered cake, we've got Dan Dan way, way over there. Hello. Way, way. <laughs> <laughs> and then my fiance on this side. Yeah. So I told you guys the stories, right? I used to work at a super high-end clothing store for women's clothing. like. I'm talking thousands of dollars on one dress that had no logos. This was like one of my first jobs. It was super low key, old money vibes, but that's not the point. My point is sometimes customers would just come in mm -hmm. and strip naked in the middle of the changing room without closing the door while I'm still hanging up their dress <laughs> that they're about to try on. I would literally hang it up, turn around, nipples in my face, like not even underwear. And I'm like, I wish I had the confidence, but I would feel so exposed, just so uncomfortable. And if I'm not gonna do it in real life, I'm not gonna do it on the internet because that's what you're doing when you go online without using a VPN. You're not closing your changing room door. You're just in the middle of this public store. Anybody could walk in if they really wanted to. If I didn't use ExpressVPN on a daily basis across all of my devices, my internet service provider could keep a log of every single thing that I ever do online. They could even sell my data to advertisers if that's what they wanted to do. I mean, it's honestly pretty scary. Just go read one article about big tech companies mining your data. That's not even considering the fact that whenever you're in public using airport Wi-Fi, college campus Wi-Fi, Starbucks Wi-Fi, you're exposing yourself to anyone that wants to know more. You know how every single device has a unique IP address and all your data goes through this secure encrypted tunnel and it can't be seen. And if you're like, Stephanie, I don't care. I like to live my life on the edge. Let me tell you something. You know Netflix? So having a Netflix account without using ExpressVPN is like paying full price for a fancy long sleeve dress at a high end clothing store, but before you leave, I just rip it in half. But you still pay full price. When you switch your location outside of the US, you can get shows that weren't available in the US. I am still talking about this because I'm literally obsessed with the world of the married. If you don't watch this K drama, what are you doing with your life? All you have to do is switch over to Korea. It is like one of the highest rated K dramas in the recent years. There's also Miracle, Letter to the president. It's a movie based on a true story. It was really, really good. My mom likes it too. So switch over to Korea and watch that. And right now, if you go to expressvpn.com and use code BIS, you can find out how to get three months free. That's expressvpn.com slash B-I-S-S BIS to find out how you can get three months free. So stay safe because it's, uh, it's wild out there. And thank you ExpressVPN for sponsoring today's video and let's get into the food. Oh, are you guys ready? ready? I'm gonna try this first. What are you the most excited for? I'm gonna go for this yeah, pal like... All right, let's You eat. said. Let's just try it. I think that's lasagna. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna try this one after. Mm. Try, try, try. Oh, it's so good. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah, this ravioli is actually. It's shrimp and lobster. Shrimp and what? lobster? It was the most expensive ravioli I've ever purchased. This is chocolate. shrimp and lobster inside? Uh-huh. I don't know, but it's spicy. Oh, I like a spicy. Like actually really spicy, actually. Really spicy? Like, really spicy. What? Okay. Whoa. Whoa, it's so spicy. Uh, it hits you. It hits you. Why is it so spicy? You think that's on I don't purpose? Know. Here, wait, wait. They say it's spicy. You're it's like a dad spicy. right now. <laughs> okay, I'm dipping the artichoke joe. Jo this is artichoke joe. Artichoke joe. Into a fried mm. piece of ravioli. I've never done this before. This wow. feels... Mm. I feel like I'm in Italy for summer. Mm-hmm. Wow, this mm. is fancy. Mm. Mm. Never been to Italy yet, right? Mm -mm. What, where is the most exciting place in the whole world? What city do you guys want to visit? Tokyo. Mm. Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Actually, mm -hmm. yeah, Tokyo. I was gonna say Berlin. Berlin. Berlin! That's interesting. You'll never meet someone more chill than Wei Wei. Literally. So true. I could literally be having a full on panic attack and he'll go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Wei Wei, you want this or this? He's like, <laughs> like, damn. Like, we need to 
live our life like way way <laughs> like this guy is so chill okay today we're back with the confessions this is actually way way's first time listening to the confessions these are confessions that are anonymously given to us by you guys so way way may judge the shit out of you guys we don't know or he might just go <laughs> he doesn't judge. He really it's doesn't good. judge. All... How's that? That was delicious. So good. Is that tiramisu? Mm hmm That's tiramisu? This one is tiramisu. Chocolate cake. Oh yeah. Tar tiramisu is like... One of my favorites. You love it, right? I, I actually used to hate it. But, what? I mean, she loves it too. Like, I mean, but I understand why she likes it. It's, it's so good. It's so Ooh, freaking this one's good. good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's creamy. So mm -hmm. creamy. Wait, wait, you want some? <sighs> He did <laughs> one second bit. <laughs> he got like three different things in one bite. <laughs> wow. wow. Tiramisu is good. I'm so good. Okay. I'm still in love with my best friend. That's the title? Mm hmm. Have you guys ever been friend zoned? Yes. <gasps> what about you, Wei Wei? <laughs> oh, he said yes. He nodded. Okay. You? I confessed to her back in 2019 mm. and got dumped and caged in the friend zone. But the thing is, after she dumped me, she became so clingy of me, asking me to watch movies together or go to eat breakfast, and that threw me off. So bad to the point where I thought, you know, maybe there's a chance. But pandemic hits, so I just accepted it and moved on, and I just felt like she really just did see me as a friend. Plus, she has a boyfriend now, which I only knew through Instagram and not directly from her, which kind of hurt because it's like, we are best friends in the first place. Why would I not hear it firsthand from her that she has a boyfriend now? Mm -hmm. But anyway. Anyway, mm. fast forward to this month, our mutual friend throws a party for her birthday. I wasn't planning on going, but she insisted I go, since it's going to be the only time that we can see each other after a while. So there I went, and boy, I went back to square one. All that moving forward during the pandemic was thrown out the window and the feelings rushed back again. She is as beautiful as the last time I saw her, oh even God. prettier if I may say so myself. And she was so clingy the whole time, leaning on me, whoa, whoa, pinching whoa. me, oh. holding oh. my fingers. It was such a magical day. But you know, reality really has a way to snap me right back. Because I saw that her wallpaper is the picture of her and her boyfriend. Uh. Okay, I just want to say something. Red flag, red flag. You know, like I I've got... Some guy friends, not really, but if I did, and when I did, I wouldn't be holding their fingers and pinching them. Yeah, what's wrong with this this best friend? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the like, girl? It's like leading someone on, right? Yeah. Okay, maybe you could say that she's innocent and she genuinely had no idea and nah. she's just a little... But, See, but that's she my rejected question. Her. She knows what she's doing. That's what she I'm asking, what though. Doing. You know, there's some people who are so overly flirtatious. I think even I'm when a they have a overly flirtatious. When they even have, have a boyfriend? Yeah, but... That's not an excuse. So this one, do you think she's being, the friend was overly flirtatious? Or? Okay, if she didn't know that he liked her, then I would say maybe let's give her the benefit of doubt. Yeah. But he already confessed once. Yeah. And he broke, she broke up with him. So she knows. And she has a boyfriend. Mm-hmm. That's so, messed up. So she's doing dirty for both, both of them. Yeah. Yeah. Is it bad that after all this time, I'm still hoping for a glimmer of hope that things might work out between us in the future, even if she currently has a boyfriend? Okay, let's hear uh, Weiwei's Wei yeah. perspective. As a Gen Z... Huh? <laughs> he said, huh? Cut ties immediately. Whoa! <laughs> Just like that. Damn. Cut tie with the best friend. If you confess and she rejected you, then continues to be flirtatious, then it's not good for you. Yeah. But, but you, like her, you like her so much. Too bad. Find someone else that you like her more than. Whoa! Damn. Damn. Wei Wei gonna be out here breaking hearts, bro. He's <laughs> gonna be like, too bad. Okay, what do you think? Well, I think the girl is kind of... Kind of messed up. Just yeah. red flag after red flag. You don't, you don't do that. I mean... Yeah. If you have a boyfriend, I mean, why would you have another guy friend? Like, so close, touching, and all that stuff. Yeah, it's better to cut it now than getting right. hurt even more, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I'll probably, yeah, try to cut, cut her off. Yeah. Or just, like, distance myself. Just move on. Gradually. Yes. If you don't think you can move on without cutting ties, you should cut ties. If she knows that you like her... But it's still flirting while has a boyfriend. I think she's just stringing you along in case things don't go well with the boyfriend. Uh, and you deserve better. Have you guys ever get called when somebody breaks up with their partner and they call you? Have you ever been a rebound? Yeah. It's not even a rebound. Sometimes they just want to just talk. They're low. Yeah, whenever like they, they break up someone, with right? someone, they will call you. Mm. Has that happened to you? 
actually. Let's say、uh, a girl gets single and then、nah. she calls you nah, nah. to hang out. Who's saying not so suspiciously, bro? <laughs> wait, wait. I'm usually just there to give advice. You're there to give advice. I came before and after. Before and after. You're a、mm. therapist. He's a therapist. Oh,、mm. wait, wait. Like I didn't expect him to be this knowledgeable in. Yeah, I'm gonna come to you, okay? Maybe like whenever we fight, babe, we、we'll、go to Weiwei. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Weiwei. Doctor Weiwei. Oh, so we fought for this reason. Do you have any、oh, advice? Cut the tie. <laughs> After eight years of dating. Well, come on, man. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa! Tell me why the first line of this is so out of left field. I made my mom break up with her boyfriend because I'm gay. LMAO. <laughs> huh? What? How does that even make sense? <laughs> okay, they said I made my mom break up with her boyfriend because I'm gay. Let me explain. So in 2006, 2007, I was maybe 11 or 12. I'm a female at the time, and I was finally allowed to have a TV in my room. This was peak luxury.、Yes. Now I could watch what I wanted without my brother crying to watch some baby show because you know I'm a adult now. I'm 12. I watch sophisticated shows like Degrassi.、Oh. <laughs> so one night I couldn't sleep. So what do I do? I turn on my TV, but the volume is super low so that my mom can't hear. I was flipping through the channels, and we all know what airs at night in the early 2000s, right? Right. No. Girls Gone Wild. So it's um they air girls flashing the camera with the iconic stars covering the nips. It's like the star emojis on you know? TV. Yeah, it was、What? a wild, wild west back、Damn. in the day. The good old times. <sighs> Now you have to use like a VH. What do you call it? <laughs> VH tape. It's hard. A DVD. <laughs> What? <Just kidding. laughs> I was mesmerized.、Mm. I had never seen a naked lady before. To be <laughs> honest, it kind of just like awoke something in me. Mm. If you know what I mean, this was definitely a core memory in my sexual awakening. The commercial was, <laughs> the commercial was coming to an end, and they tell you that you can watch the uncensored version on the TV on demand with Comcast.、Mm. So I thought, hmm, am I attracted to women? Am I lesbian? Well, the only way to find out, you guessed it, is watch the uncensored version. <laughs> so I go on demand. Search up "Girls Gone Wild" and there it is, uncensored woman just a click away. This was for research purposes. That's what it was. I had to be sure if I was gay or not, you know.、Mm. So without hesitation, I clicked it. Best hour-long content I've watched in my life. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been a while. Okay, I'm just fucking dying at her writing. <laughs> You're taking me on a trip. So I enjoy the show and I go back to bed like nothing happened. The next day comes around, I go to school, and when I come back, I open the door to my mom yelling at her boyfriend. I'm thinking, what the hell is going on? She kicks him out, and I asked if she was okay. She told me that he came over yesterday night while she took a night shift to babysit and make sure me and my brother didn't wake up and need anything. And then she told me that she saw that he had purchased lesbian porn on our <laughs> TV, and she was disgusted with him. Bruh. How dare he do something so disgusting in my house with <laughs> my kids in the house? Which, like, honestly, valid point. Like, it's not the fact that the boyfriend is watching porn, but it's like you're babysitting my kids. Yeah, I would be and, like, "Are、yeah. you? A, what are you? That's weird." Yeah, but the dude didn't do it. The dude did nothing wrong. Wait, so did she not tell on her mom? Let's see. Dude, I feel bad for the guy. <laughs> she, she was pissed, and I was mortified. <laughs> I didn't know I. Bought the show. <laughs> I thought I just watched it. I just watched it. <laughs> I didn't even give it a second glance. A girl was just down bad at like 1 a.m. and didn't consider the repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> She then asked if we woke up last night or if God forbid he came in our rooms and did anything inappropriate. I told her no, no, no.、Uh, I didn't even know that he was here, <laughs> guys. I let that man take the fall. <laughs> He was a nice guy too, but on the plus side, I'm bisexual, so the film helped. <laughs> Shout out to Sean for taking the fall for me. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, hey, so is her mom single now? <laughs> Why are you trying to holla? No. <laughs> Yeah, feel, I, I, I'm happy for her. Happy for who? For the daughter. Oh, I mean, her, her. For what? For getting away with it? 
Yeah. She's like, for being bisexual. And finding her own passion. <laughs> passion. Bro, that's... Bro, would you confess? I would. Oh, yeah, right. Are you sure? Something, so, actually, something similar happened to me. <laughs> What? No, 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 no. But like similar, but not similar. I don't know what it was. I saw like on the newsletter paper has those numbers at the at the bottom, but it wasn't anything inappropriate. It was like games. Have oh. you guys had those okay. games? So basically, you dial this number. Okay. It talks to you. They're like, so you are joining this game, and in this game, you can choose to be a a soldier, b a witch, c but. Press one, two, three. So you'll press the button okay. to play. Okay. So I just press, and then they're like, to continue, you wanna choose. Uh, right now, you're going on a journey. Do you wanna go for the left side or the right side? Press one to go to the left, press two to go to. I just keep pressing. Okay. And then I was on the phone for a couple hours that night because it's low key addicting, you uh -huh. know? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like a squid game type. I but they know. charge you for every minute or something. Yes. Back in the day, they oh did. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. And then I remember. Next month, the phone bill came. No. It was like hundreds of dollars. My grandma was like, did you do this? I can't even lie. It has like the time and all that. <laughs> like how long it was. It was a ridiculous amount of money. Uh -huh. I was like, it, the same reaction like this girl. Like, I thought I just was on the phone. <laughs> 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 I didn't know I was paying for it. So who'd you blame? Who'd you blame? Huh? Who'd you Bro. blame? Who did I blame? Yeah. And no one, just me. Because yeah. me and my sister sleep on a bunk bed. I'm at the bottom with a phone next to me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're out of But if she was at the bottom, would you have blamed your sister? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would be so screwed because the other day I was late on the phone with my friend for like six hours. Six hours? Yeah. Okay, wait, wait. You gotta confess. You got a girlfriend? No. Sounds oh. like wait, wait, got so many likes talking to. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happened. <laughs> okay. Why do you guys have the best headliners? Hi, Stephanie. I don't know what to do with this information and it's bothered me for a while, so I'm gonna let it bother you too. Love you. <laughs> anyway, I, 25 female, had a friends with benefit, 26 year old male, and we were friends for many months. The first time I met him, I thought he was cute. He was tall, he worked out every day, and he had a Zayn Malik type of buzz cut. Oof. Mm. But he looked, he looked familiar. I don't like that. I don't like when you say that. My head is going into K-drama. He's your brother. Oh, no. <laughs> He's your half-brother. Okay, I couldn't quite put my finger on it, but he looks familiar. One night while we were in the middle of sexy time, I was under him staring at his face. And it just f***ing hit me. Um, his wee wee did. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was, it, he looks like Dan Dan. For real? Wait. What? He looks like Dan Dan. <laughs> No, just wait till this next sentence. Oh, exactly, God. exactly like him, but with a buzz cut and a Chris Evans body. <laughs> <laughs> you got a Den Den body. Chris Evans body. Oh my God, I'll take that. What the fuck? We're not seeing each other anymore. That's a confession for another day. But every time I watch your videos or Dan Dan's Twitch streams, put your hands up in the air. Look at my ugly hair. The thought of my Friends with Benefit, looking like him, pops up. <laughs> <laughs> hit the gym, come on, Benefit. Uh, <laughs> I'ma hit the gym every single day. I don't know what to do with this information. Please help. P.S. I'm not saying Dan Dan isn't cute. He is. I'm just unnerved that he looks exactly like the guy that I used to f*** Are you? Did you know, Wei Wei, someone put a confession in that they were having sex with their boyfriend and called them Dan Dan? Yeah, I was like, <laughs> wait, I was Bro. like, is this story the same? Or? Bro. But I guess Bro. it's different. You, I yeah. guess you have some sort of sex appeal that I don't know and don't want to know about. Well, I, but didn't know he, I didn't know. I didn't know. Yeah. My friend actually thinks he's cute. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wei Wei's friend thinks Dan Dan. Well, where's my cute? girlfriend? Yeah, I'm single. where's the friend? Are you ready for the next one? My mom and I are not really close until 2018 after my grandma passed. My grandma was like my best friend and I would spend most of my time with her. So after my grandma passed, my mom had always been there to make sure that I was okay. 
We didn't really spend a lot of time together, but we got a lot closer. One day, when I was watching one of your mukbangs next to my mom, she joined in and from there on, we would always listen to your mukbangs when we were eating. We usually didn't eat together until then. We got closer through your videos and true crime. Let's go. We became more comfortable with each other and we would spend every day together. We would even watch your vlogs together. Unfortunately, in October of 2021, we found out that she had cancer and it was really hard for my family. This isn't really a confession, but I just wanted to thank you for doing what you do, which allowed my mom and I to bond over something. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be as close and I would be living a life full of regrets and I would not have as many memories with her. She recently passed in March and I just hope that you know that your content played a huge role in our relationship and I'm so thankful for that. I hope that you know that your videos mean a lot to others and we appreciate you. I love you so much, Steph, and thank you again for everything. Anna. I love you, Anna. We were like a loss of words. I don't even know what to say. <laughs> I don't even know what to say because like my grandma passed recently too. I know the feeling. I can't even imagine if my mom passed. I feel like I don't even deserve to be part of that relationship. Like I didn't even do anything. So I don't even deserve to be like part of like the little relationship that you guys formed. But thank you for letting me be there. I love you. We love you. <laughs> okay. I work as a science teacher for about eight years or so now. A video of yours has opened my eyes to something that bothered me a little bit, but paid no mind until your video reminded me of it. Nowadays, kids are finding themselves and figuring out their sexuality more freely, which is great moving forward. So when one of my students came out to me one day, I was happy for her. But whenever I asked about her journey and how she found out about herself, she would seem to get nervous and avert her eyes. So I decided not to push it. For context, I usually have students hanging out in my classroom and when they didn't want to be in the lunchroom or they were waiting for their ride after school, they would hang out in my classroom. Well, one day during lunch, I left a couple of kids in my classroom to grab food from my car. Apparently, I left my phone on the desk and when I came back, I realized I had left it and I thought nothing of it, except that it felt like it had been moved. Mm, wait, this sounds <laughs> familiar. Oh, the nudes. Remember, there was oh, a yeah. student who who went through Snoop yes. through the teacher's phone and found out the teacher's wife's nudes. Teacher's wife's nudes. Yeah. She saw it on his phone. And then that's how she realized she's gay. <gasps> she's oh my god! That remember? Was... Bro, wait, wait, wait. That was like... Yeah, wait, that's what they're ago. thinking about. Then that must be what they're thinking about. Okay, okay, hold on. The human brain notices mm -hmm. things even if our consciousness doesn't see anything different from before. And so here I was laying in bed with my wife, watching your video together, and you got to a confession about a student going through her teacher's gallery and finding his wife's nudes. Okay. My wife laughed at the similarities and I'm wondering, should I tell her? Mm. He's the teacher? No, no. Wait, never mind. They said, just kidding. I'm not the teacher in the confession. I just wanted to troll. Love your videos. What the? Wait, <laughs> I just, hold on, no. what Wait, the hold on. <laughs> Hold on, my mom is calling. <laughs> you was here? Literally. She did got a get us. Yeah, she, she did, did got him, okay. She did, she did got him. Got, got him. him. Got him. Okay, the next one. I'm trash. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> right. Well, I am trash. <laughs> I am trash. Please don't judge me. Just tell me what the fork I do now. So I'm married happily i have four kids the husband is great but he's literally never <laughs> home not because he doesn't care but because he works for a big tech company mm. and he goes away on business oh no like for real on business not like an affair i promise i'm the one who's trash here and not him so anywho i have always been in attention for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Call it daddy issues. Dad's dead. Mommy issues. Mom's not dead. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue what the problem is, but bits, there is a problem. So we have four other couples we like to hang out with. We all have boys around the same age, so we just let the kids play while we cook and drink and etc. Well, the trouble started about two years ago. I feel like I know what's going on. I was drinking and I was wearing a low cutish top, lowish cut top, not like low low, right? But who cares if she was? Mm -hmm. So was one of the other wives. She's fucking the wife. <laughs> <laughs> she thought was wrong. She fucking the wife. Bruh, I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure who started it. 
But we somehow ended up throwing chips down each other's shirts, bringing attention to the cleavage that otherwise would have not gone noticed. We're moms now, remember? So pretty soon, everyone is particip- They're fucking each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's an orgy. And they're taking turns. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. So th pretty soon, everyone is participating and throwing chips down our shirts. We what? laugh and have fun and all is fine. Well, once I get home and I have to put boys to bed, I check my phone and see a message from my best friend, the second mom with the lowish cut top, but her husband. Not her. Her husband. Mm -hmm. So not a friend. No, the friend's mm. husband. Okay. No biggie. Figured we must have forgotten something and my hubby was in the shower. I view the message and it says, thanks for showing a little skin tonight. Would love to see more. Kiss emoji. Oh my God. Oh my god. Okay. What? Why the fork would he send that to me? So I just reply with, I just think you have the wrong number, lol. And he replies, nope, I've had the biggest crush on you for like 10 years. I just know that I'll regret it if I don't at least try to shoot my shot. Just like that. So just I blocked like him and I told my best friend. I'm kidding, I'm trash, remember? Instead we <laughs> snuck <laughs> Instead we snuck around and kept talking and now we have been for nine months and have had multiple pregnancy scares while having a husband <laughs> while having a husband and kids and their kids and <sighs> i want to stop but honestly i caught feelings for him and i can't get over the feeling of getting the attention that i'm lacking from my husband why couldn't he have tried for me 10 years ago when we both had crushes on each other but we were too young and too stupid to say anything also adding that he is not happy in his marriage, but he won't leave because he doesn't want to lose his boys. And honestly, same. Also adding that since we started fooling around, he can no longer finish for his wife and she constantly complains to me about it. <coughs> oh my God. Also, this adding that this man is the only other man I've been with besides my husband. I know I'm trash, but I love you. Help me. What? But like, what? are you gonna cheat on me too? <laughs> Girl, you done goofed. But we're gonna try to be as non-judgmental because it's already happened, right? It's happened. If you had come to us and said, this is about to happen, what do we do? I'd say, you know what? Don't do it. But you've already done it. You've already done it. So what is the point in dogging on you? So she, she should continue doing No, it? no, that's not what I said at <laughs> all, okay? I think you gotta tell your husband. It's better that you tell him than he finds out. I, I would yeah. say step one, tell your husband. Step two, let the man tell his wife first. And I think you still need to tell the best friend. You need to have a conversation. And then I would say, yeah, I don't know if you're going to get a divorce. But afterwards, I think the last part where you said, this is the only other guy that I've been with since my husband. Maybe you also, maybe it's time to like explore. Maybe you feel like it's love with this second guy because it's exciting. There's attention. Who knows? Maybe you just... I don't know, bruh. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so stressed, you know? I'm like, I feel for the husband, but then like my toxic trait is like, you told me you love me, so I feel like I should love you back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, let's ask the therapist. Yes, therapist. Huh? What do you think, therapist? I don't know. He said, I don't know, not this one. <laughs> not this one. This one's too much, bro. <laughs> if you have no plans on ending it, then you gotta tell the husband. Because mm. if, if you keep this going, you're only gonna hurt more people or hurt them deeper. The trauma will be bigger and you're gonna get caught. And even if you end it now, you still might get caught. And I don't know, it probably does fuck with the foundation of your marriage. Next one. Hey Bis, loyal sub of four years. Even have gone back and watched videos you posted before I followed you because I've just enjoyed the joy that you bring to people. Thank you so much. I'm gonna make it as brief as possible, but it's long and there's lots of twists. Okay, sorry. I thought we were gonna be like, love you, love Dan Dan. You're like, here, let's get into it. Let's right. go, bro. I like it. My confession starts when I was 15. Like your regular 15 year old, I wasn't doing what I... I wasn't always doing I wasn't always doing what I should. One night I decided to sneak out and go to a party. There I was drugged through my drink, ripped and left unconscious for 12 plus hours. Weeks later I found out I was pregnant and because of the way it happened, I knew I couldn't handle to keep the baby. I got a procedure and I'm not proud of it, 
but I terminated the pregnancy. It's still painful to talk about to this day, 11 years later. With that procedure, we found out that I had a tumor on an ovary that had to be removed. So two months later, back in the operation room, I went. While in surgery, I had anesthesia awareness. Oh my gosh. No, what, what, what? Where you can... That's, have you guys... That's when you're supposed to be like unconscious, but you instead... Awake. Yes, so like you, you felt everything. Some people say they feel it. Some people that say they don't feel it, but they hear and like see sometimes if their eyelids haven't t been taped. Mm -hmm. And the trauma is unreal. I could feel majority of the... Oh, I, I was hoping it was like you could just hear. And when I woke up, the doctors said it must have been a dream. But if it wasn't, no one would believe a 15-year-old hormonal girl. Needless to say, that messed me up for a while. After 17... At 17, after a year and a half of deep depression, crippling anxiety, no self-image, and honestly no desire to continue life, I met a boy. He was standoffish, but also the sweetest soul that I have ever met at the time. Our parents were mutual friends that lost touch until then, and it pushed us towards each other, and mine said that it must have been fate. Like, her parents were saying, maybe it's fate. Because, you know, their parents were friends. His name was Josh. When I say I fell hard, I felt so hard. Like, the deepest <laughs> love and most strong emotions I have ever felt came from this boy, even to the point after not being able to be sexually interested since my attack until I met him. But, man, the best sex of my life. Everything was great. Until it wasn't. A few months later, he ended everything like nothing happened and we never mm. had feelings. We'd only dated six months and he quickly moved on with girl A. And I was crushed. Looking back, I fully get it. I was in love. He said he was in love, but clearly he wasn't. We were so young, so it makes sense. But I just really thought at the time I was going to marry this guy. Two years go by, many times when we would casually bump into each other through mutual friends. And I always immediately felt that love for him, and he never felt the same. Of course, I tried my best to play it cool. And I did pretty good at hiding my true feelings from his friends and from him at the time. Now, remember how I said he moved on? Well, he broke up with girl A. Two and a half years later, and he immediately reached out to me to meet him privately. Only problem was, I had met a new guy. Let's call him Guy O. And I was really interested, and I could really see a future with this guy. But still, I went and met Josh. Nothing happened, but the passion was still burning in my heart for him. I played it so cool. I kept my distance, I kept my tone low and raspy, told him even if it would have been a few months ago, things could have been different, but I've moved on. Yes, this is what I told him and how I played it. I wanted to hurt him, hurt him like he hurt me. He destroyed me. I had made so much progress while I was with him and no one ever saw the depression in me after we met, but from the day he dumped me at 17, I was heartbroken. I always said I would go back in a heartbeat and in that moment when he begged for me back, all I could do was my best to hurt him. And it continued for the next year and a half. He tried calling me, he said he made the worst mistake of his life and would do anything to get me back, but I wanted to hurt him like he hurt me. But in that time, the man that I am met, oh, yeah, remember him? I had continued dating him and I fell in love with him while still loving my teenage ex from years ago. And oh, and I got engaged. The last time Josh and I spoke, he congratulated me on my engagement and told me, if I can't have you, I'm glad he does because I know he's going to love you. And I got married that summer. Guess what? Here I am almost six years married to O. I, he treats me like a queen. We have two beautiful children, a successful business, and my husband has always had the physical appearance of the rock. He's like jacked, 6'3 and 245 <coughs> pounds of pure muscle. Pure <laughs> muscle? She said, so life is great, except every time I see my ex's parents, because remember, our parents are friends, my heart speeds up. I get clammy and all I can think about is how much I love Josh and not my husband. Josh what? is still single and has a daughter that has an age gap that fits between my kids. Red I will let, I will never leave my <laughs> husband nor will I cheat on him. Just keep this dark secret that I have. I know I am lucky to have my husband and I couldn't have anything more than what he gives me in our family. I think falling in love in the trauma is what caused the deep root of feelings. I don't know but neither of them will ever know. Listen, I can't even be mad at you because you're literally doing the right thing. You're staying with your husband. You're being good to your husband. It's not even that. I think it's normal to I still normal. have a crush on yeah. like, someone. Oh, you think past. so? No, 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 no. Oh, not no, me, not me. Oh, so you, you think, think so? so? No. <laughs> Remember the movie we watched? The Chinese movie? 
that's like really weird. Yeah. Sometimes like when you reach certain age, you will think back, you're like, oh, the good old time when you mm -hmm. were 17 dating the first love. It, right. Everything was so romantic. But things are different actually. The memory, the feeling are still there, but it doesn't mean it's better for you to go back to that person. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I think she misses the feeling that she had at that exact age, at that exact moment with Josh. Yeah. Mm. But it's not necessarily for Josh. I don't know. Mm. That's what I think about like younger love relationships. Mm -hmm. Like when I think back, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I guess maybe I missed that relationship because I was young and I was like, it's like one of those relationships where you don't have stress because you're so young and well, not saying that she didn't have stress. She obviously had so much stress and trauma and that's all like part of the whole thing, right? You get it. But you know, a lot of it has to do with the fact that things are so different, especially if you have kids and stuff. But wow, that was actually wholesome. Not wholesome, but like it left me feeling a lot of things. It's complex feeling. Yeah, it's giving like yeah. very strong humans are complicated and like yeah. emotions are so nuanced and there's so many layers to everything. Yo gotta stop with these titles because <laughs> are you guys writing a novel? I need this novel. If this was a book I would read it. How I ended up pregnant with my enemy's hot brother's baby. So imagine the person I hate most and I'm single and I got pregnant with her brother, her hot brother's oh baby. No. So I was 15 living my best life as any spoiled Asian American teen from a high class Asian family with doctors. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, can you guys adopt me? <laughs> okay, so one summer my family, aunts, uncles, cousins, and grandparents all decide that they wanna to go to a family trip to Disney in Florida. Me being the annoying teenager was like, Oh my gosh, that's so lame. I don't want to hang out with you all. Me being my parents' favorite child, I think. They told me I could stay behind, but they told me that I would have to stay with the family. That's my parents' best friend's family. So she's staying with her parents' best friend's family. They told me the Jones will babysit me since I was only 15. Lame, whatever. I was pretty pissed off, but the Jones had a 16-year-old daughter, Emma, who was a close friend to me. So I was like, whatever, I guess I'll be okay. It'll be fun. So my family goes to Disney and I'm at the Jung family home. Emma and I are doing stuff that most teens do. We're on Omegle and video chatting hot guys we find. Oh. So Emma, being the more adventurous and freaky friend, she was on Omegle on her laptop on her bed and was giving the guys a show, if you know what I mean. I was on Omegle what? by Emma's desk and I was more innocent and shy so I was just giggling and blushing and trying to start small talk on Omegle chat on my laptop. Well, I set my Omegle preference to the city that I was in and I matched with this super cute Asian guy. He looked like an adorable K-pop idol who just debuted with his cute squeezable cheeks and his soft brown eyes. We'll call him Superman since that was my nickname for him and I hope he isn't watching this because I would die of embarrassment. Well anyways, me and Superman, we hit it off. We're laughing and talking about life and I'm like, oh my god, he's my soulmate. We talked on Omegle for hours until I got tired. We exchanged phone numbers and he added me on Facebook. So now, Superman and I are texting each other, calling and video chatting for the next couple of days. And he finally asks if I want to meet up at his place. And I'm like, mm. hell yeah, cool beans, let's do it. So Superman is 16 and works, you guessed it, at McDonald's. Hold on, McDonald's. <laughs> And he told me he gets off work at 3 p.m. and asked me to meet him at his house at 3.30 p.m. And I'm 15, I don't have a car, I don't drive. So I asked Emma to drop me off. Emma was excited for me until I told her who I was seeing. I guess Emma knew Superman. She has beef with his sisters. Mm. Emma told me that Superman was in her grade and they attended the same school. Emma was telling me to be careful because although Superman was chill, his sisters were so <laughs> Superman has two older sisters and two younger sisters. Superman also has eight cousins whom are all girls. He's the only boy in their family besides the dads and uncles and the grandpas of course. So I'm getting worried because these girls are apparently bitches and I've dealt with a few of my ex's mean sisters before but I was like Whatever, he's hot, I guess I'll take the hit. So I get ready, curl my hair real cute. I'm wearing a simple Chanel t-shirt. What? Girl, I was about simple to say, Disneyland, Chanel. I went to Disneyland, can we bond on Disneyland? You said simple Chanel t-shirt and booty shorts and Chanel flats with my cute little Chanel crossbody. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> she's this 15? girl is Jenny Kim or some sh 
Okay. <laughs> yes, I was spoiled and had parents who were both really well off. So Emma drives me to Superman's house and his family lives in a duplex and his cousins live next door. So Emma and I ring the doorbell and a girl opens up. She smiles sweetly at me and asks who I am. And I tell the girl that I'm here to see Superman. And her whole demeanor changes. She goes from sweet Alabama girl to bitchy New Yorker. And she says, why are you, to, why are you here to see my brother? You're not his type. What? And I'm like, what the fuck? Why is she attacking me like that? So I told her that me and Superman are friends and he asked me to come over. So she lets me in with an eye roll and then goes upstairs. I hear her telling other people who I was and I started getting nervous. So anyways, Superman parents are home and it was so awkward. His parents are sweet and they introduced themselves to me. They gave me a tour of their home and they gave me a tour of their relatives home next door since they lived in a duplex. I don't know, it was weird. So at this point, I'm, I'm parched. Is that like a fancy rich word for like tired? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> oh, parch means dry through intense heat. I'm texting Superman asking him when he's coming home and he's all like, I'm sorry, baby girl. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? It's probably like, I'm sorry, baby girl. Oh. The manager made me stay longer due to the rush. <laughs> and I'm all living for it because he called me his baby girl. I am his baby girl. <laughs> so it's 4.15 p.m. and we were supposed to hang out at 3.30 p.m. So me and Emma excuse ourselves to the bathrooms because you know real bitches stick together. Mm -hmm. If one of us got to use the bathroom, we are both going. Emma and I use the restroom upstairs and as we leave the restroom we hear chattering downstairs it's Superman's fucking sisters and cousins talking shit about me and Emma mainly me they were saying how spoiled and privileged I was saying how I was disrespectful for flaunting how rich I was then they say that I was rude for not talking much first of all bitch I'm an introvert my MBTI is ISFJ bitch <laughs> 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 okay, I'm shy. I was trying my best. I was here for your brother, not a damn family reunion. <laughs> so, anyways, they continued with berating me and they went on to talk about my looks, saying I wore too much makeup, I had an ugly nose, and that if my parents were so rich, why didn't I get plastic surgery to fix my face? <laughs> okay. Just a little note. I am not an ugly bitch. I love how I look and I love the features I have from my parents. Also, I was wearing natural makeup. Me and Emma, we were eavesdropping and basically leaning our bodies forward from upstairs to try and listen to everything that those bitches were saying about us. Emma's bitch ass accidentally leans God. too much on me and my ass goes rolling down the stairs. <laughs> what? Yikes. Like, I legit rolled, like the fucking movies, down the stairs. <laughs> what the oh. <laughs> so now, Superman's bits ass cousins and sisters are staring at me like, and I'm embarrassed. I literally dash out the front door, and guess who the f just arrived home? Super f***ing man. I'm literally on the verge of a panic attack and a mental breakdown. I have tears threatening to fall from my eyes. I see him. He smiles, and then his face changes to worry, and damn. He looks so cute and hot in his McDonald's uniform. <laughs> what? Can I just say something? This is giving um Serena and Dan, Dan Humphreys. It's giving rich girl. It's like, oh my God, he looks so hot in his uniform. What? You know what I'm talking about? What From Gossip knows? Girl? Oh. Serena Vanderwoodson. Whatever. She's like a rich, rich girl who falls in love with Dan Humphreys because he's poor and she thinks that everything he does is so like... So exotic. So quirky. <laughs> she's so rich. Like he has a job and she like is like, wow. Wow. Anyways, he comes up to me and I softly push him off and tell him that I have to go in a shaking voice. And he's not letting go of me and has a strong ass grip on me. <laughs> okay. Emma comes out of the house and out follow Superman's sisters and cousins and they're all yelling disgusting rude stuff to us like, go die in a hole, fat whore. Ugly bitch, go home and don't come back. Stay the fuck away from my brother and our family. Like, they're going at it. And I'm just in shock. Like, what did I even do? So anyway, Superman looks at his family and he looks pissed. And he kind of looked hot when he was mad. <laughs> wait, wait, what? Like, he happened? can be mad at me in bed all he wants. Like, yes, that is. <laughs> There's a lot of emotions wait, going on, bro. Is that really how 15-year-old talk, wait, wait? 
because that's how I talk in my head. That is kind of how my <laughs> inner dialogue be. Anyway, Superman shouts, shut up. Don't talk to her like that. Just go inside. Okay. So at this point, Superman's grip on me loosens, and I get out from his hold and run to Emma's car. He follows me, but I lock the door. Emma still is not in the car, and she's actually yelling back at Superman's sisters and cousins and telling them to f*** off. Superman is at the car window telling me he's sorry and to like please open the window and I'm just full on bawling at this point because I am so exhausted from this drama. Like I barely know the kid and his family hates me. Emma walks up to them and Superman and tells them to f off and to control his family before she starts fighting them. Can I just say I really like Emma Like who are you? Emma I want to be friends with you guys. Emma fucking that's where it's at <laughs> okay superman apologizes to emma for his sisters and cousins behavior and then he leaves he apologizes to me again at my window but i refuse to lift my head up and i was just a crying mess so emma drives off back to her place and she consoles me and i have no idea but i just felt such strong feelings for superman but i could not deal with his family emma is still heated as she tells me we need revenge, and I'm like, revenge? What? So Emma goes on to tell me that his sisters and cousins can't treat us like that. And I'm like, okay, sure, let's make a plan. So Emma's plan was for me to get close to Superman and date him. After getting close to him, she told me I could manipulate him into breaking off his relationship with his family, or I could break his heart in spite and get his family real pissed off. So me, being the dumbass 15 year old that I was, I was like, okay. So as we make up this stupid ass plan, Emma's hot 17 year old brother walks in and he's telling us how stupid we are and how this revenge will come to bite us in the ass. Who knew he was actually right? <laughs> LOL. So fast forward, I forgive Superman and I'm talking to him again. We hit it off again and we're lovey-dovey. My family comes back from Disney and I leave Emma's house. The good news is that I literally only lived in the town next door, so it wasn't really a long distance relationship. Me and Superman are talking all summer and hanging out without his sisters and cousins. At the end of summer, he asked me to be his girlfriend and I was so excited. I said, yes, of course. So fast forward some more, we go on and have a great relationship. We go to homecoming prom, lots of little dates. We lose our virginity to each other. This whole entire time, his sisters are constantly messaging me, telling me how I'm not good enough, and telling me to kill myself. Jeez. It was literally so stressful that I was in love with Superman, but his family would say these nasty things to me, and I kept them to myself because I didn't want him to hate his family or to have to choose them or me. Wow, that's actually really mature for a 15-year-old. Should be older than 15 by now, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, at 26 years old, I don't know if I would do that. If I had your family members telling me to kill myself, I think I'd be like, hello? They're right. telling me to <laughs> kill myself. <laughs> That's, wow, very mature. Superman and I had a really great relationship. My family loved him and adored him. He was an extrovert and acted like the perfect Asian son-in-law. His parents were great to me, so welcoming and nice, but it's just his sisters were the opposite. They avoided me and would never talk to me when we were in the same room. But then, had all these fucking balls to message me disgusting things like telling me to kill myself on Facebook. Later, I found out that my Superman told his sisters and cousins to behave when they see me in public or else he would drop them all. So he chose me. But anyway, a year passes and me and Superman are in love. We're literally planning our future. Superman was a grade ahead of me and now a senior at his school. I was only a junior and we both attended different schools. So anyway, as a surprise, I transferred schools. Mm. I had to beg my parents and promise them I'd go the medical route like, like them and become a doctor. Even though I hated the medical field and I just wanted to be a teacher because I love kids. I was also really smart, not to brag. I was given the option to graduate early after transferring to Superman's school. So I decided to graduate early and enroll as a senior. I did not tell Superman any of this. So on the first day of school, I show up to his school and I was just waiting to see him. I avoided his text, his calls in between class because I wanted to surprise him in person. We finally crossed, path we finally crossed paths at lunch and it was so cute. His shocked face was like, babe, what are you doing here? And I'm explaining to him how I transferred and he was so happy. like. I could die. He hugged me and kissed me in the lunchroom. Oh, thank God. I thought this was going a different place. <laughs> like where? Like he got, he got a school girlfriend or something. Uh. There are good people out there, huh? So everyone is hooting and shower, shouting and cheering. So fast forward to January. It's the second semester of senior year. Me and Superman are the it couple and everything in life is great besides his bitch ass sisters <laughs> and girl cousins who are still threatening me. 
Well, it's the weekend and Emma asked me to come for a sleepover because she just broke up with her boyfriend and needed a girl's night. And she said her parents weren't gonna be home. So I go over to Emma's and we're watching movies, crying, laughing, etc. So Emma's hot older brother, who we will now call Evan, who's 18, was home for winter college break. He walks into Emma's room and asks me how I was doing. I go on to tell him all about how, you know, Superman and I have been dating and blah, blah, blah. And Evan is just sitting there listening to me talk. I notice how his demeanor kind of changed to annoyed. So I stopped talking and apologized for talking so much. He said it was fine and then told me and Emma to have a good night. And I look at Emma and I'm like, what the f just happened? Like, is Emma okay? Or is Evan okay? Did I do something wrong? Emma says, no, Evan's just being an asshole and just to drop it. So we go to bed and I'm sleeping in the guest bedroom. So I get up to use the bathroom and I see the kitchen lights on and I go to see the kitchen and see Evan shirtless in boxers and completely drunk. Evan sees me and walks up to me and hugs me and he's slurring his words and telling me how beautiful I am and I'm like, Ugh! and he continues to say how I turned out to become such a beautiful woman. What? Girl, are you even 18? So then Evan pushes himself on me and kisses me and I push him off and I was like, whoa, I have a boyfriend and that pisses Evan off. So he starts saying how my relationship is fake and it's for revenge. He then goes on to tell me that he's been in love with me since we were kids. So Evan is two years older than them. So, and he starts crying out of nowhere and is like hugging my waist. So like he drops down to the ground and is hugging my waist and he cries and asks me why it couldn't be him and why I couldn't have chosen him. And I'm like, what the fuck? I didn't even know you were an option. <laughs> That's a lot. I can't you even imagine, bro. <laughs> like, if if someone were drunk around me and was doing that, I would literally, this is me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> even if he was an option, it would never be him. He's like my brother. <laughs> I mean, he literally has never showed interest in me and always treated me like a younger sister since I had no siblings. So I'm just awkwardly standing there while Evan has hugging my waist and then all of a sudden... Evan says something that brings chills to my body and he says, it's okay, you can date whoever you want, but in the end, I'll be the one to marry you and I'll make sure of it. And as he's saying that, he's like squeezing me tighter and tighter around mm. the waist. Like that creeped the shit out of me. So I'm scared. I push him off, literally run to the guest room to grab my purse with my keys and my phone and I dash out the front door with no shoes. Evan is literally stumbling around after me because he's drunk as and he keeps repeating, come back, come back. I'm like, what the fuck? So I drive. Okay, I drive 30 minutes home in tears because of how scared I was. Emma tries contacting me in the morning, but I don't respond. I didn't want anything to do with her or her brother right now. Mm. So later that morning, my boyfriend Superman shows up. He's upset. His eyes are red with tears and I'm like, what's wrong? And he asked me if I was playing him and I was so confused what he's talking about. And he takes out his phone and plays a voice memo recording of me and Emma talking about the revenge plan of what? how I was supposed to make Superman fall in love with me and leave and drop his bitchy sisters and girl cousins. Like you can clearly hear my dumbass voice in the voice memo agreeing to the plan that Emma was describing. As the voice memo ended, I tell Superman that I can explain. I tell him that it was a joke and we were just upset about what happened that day at his house. I told him I loved him and I wanted to be with him, but he was not having it, nor was he believing it. He told me we were over and to never talk to him again. So for weeks, I tried contacting him through his phone, social media, in person, at his home, and at our school, he ignored me. Finally, he agreed to meet with me, and we met up for our first official date spot. It was a small cafe with lots of different coffee drinks, bobas, and desserts. I ran up to him, and I hugged him. He let me, and we held each other for a few minutes until he pulled apart, and he told me that this is the last time he would ever speak to me, and this was our real breakup. So I cried and I apologized to him over and over again. I told him I loved him and I regret that stupid revenge plan. He asked me if any of my feelings were ever true and I told him that they were all true and that I forgot about the revenge plan and I didn't even care about it. Superman then got up and told me he loved me, but he doesn't think that we were meant to be together. He told me to live well, meet another man, and to be happy. I told him I already met the men in my dreams and it was him. And he just smiled and walked away. That was how I lost my first love. We never spoke to each other again for years. I was actually able to transfer back to my old school and still at a senior status. It just hurt too much to see him in the halls every day. I also never spoke to Evan or Emma again. I told my parents how Evan kissed me, what he said, and how he grabbed my waist tightly. And they were pissed off. They threatened the family. My family is very influential and well-off, so we had higher status than the 
family, so they were kind of scared when my family threatened them. Now, Evan and Emma stayed away from me, and I never spoke to their parents again. Their family kind of disappeared, so I don't know what happened to them. Also, did I mention I was pregnant? I found out I was pregnant with Superman's baby after graduation. Her period is super irregular, so me missing a few months of my period was normal. I found out I was pregnant at five months when I saw myself gaining more weight and other changes in my body that didn't make sense. My parents were pissed, but didn't ask questions because they knew that I was going through a lot. I stopped seeing my friends, my family, and I just shut down. I was, I was a depressed mess. If it wasn't for my baby girl, Bella, I would not be here. I went to university in my hometown, and my parents and the nannies helped me out a lot with Bella. Fast forward a few years, Bella is now three years old. I have my own apartment for us, and I just graduated with my biomedical degree. Was about to enter the med school I got into, and an invitation was sent to my parents' address that was addressed to me. Bro, this is a, like a novel. Bro. It's like a documentary. It was a wedding invitation. Oh, oh. For Superman's wedding. No way. What? I cried when I saw it. I was also mad because why would he send me this? Was this a joke? Was this his revenge? His sisters? His cousins? Fuck y'all. So out of spite, I RSVP'd and said I would bring two additional people. My hot gay best friend Grayson, who is, you know, pretty hot, and my daughter <laughs> Bella. And we would look like the perfect family if only Grayson was straight and into me. Well, fast forward to present time. It's a few days before Superman's wedding that I RSVP'd to. And y'all, I just saw Superman at our special cafe and he was alone and I was with Bella. He saw me and Bella and did a double take. He came up to me and greeted me acting like we were old friends. He asked me how old Bella was and I was about to lie when my annoyingly honest daughter goes, I just turned four years old. Listen, kids, kids and the audacity. I'm like, shh. Did your parents make you do that? Where they make you lie for the kids discount? What? I'm like 16 and I'm like, uh, I'm five. <laughs> <laughs> so a little bit about Bella. She has most of Superman's facial features, but my jet black hair and button nose. Superman looks at me and says, who's the father? <laughs> I think he probably had an inkling, uh, you know, cause for he's like doing the math and he's like, um, hello. In my head, I'm like, who the hell do you think you are to ask me this question? You better fuck off before I throw some hands. Mm -hmm. But before I could say, Speak, my little Bella goes, Mommy said Daddy's at work, but I never have seen Daddy before. What? Was like, that? Mommy said Daddy went away to work, but I never see Daddy before. Huh. So Superman looks at my daughter and asks, What's your daddy's name? And Bella goes, My mama says his name is Superman. <laughs> so what? his name. Or, wait, Superman. I'm trying to understand if it was the nickname or the real name. Uh -huh. Maybe it was the nickname, ah! but Ooh. either way, so time. when my Bella said that, Superman still left his body. I never told Bella her dad's name. I just told her he's our Superman. He's our Superman. So she associated Superman with her dad. Superman knew damn well it was him. So anyway, he looks shocked. I grab Bella and I dip. And as I'm putting Bella in her car seat, Superman comes up behind me and is asks if she's his, lol. And I go, no, she's mine. She's my daughter that I raised and whom I will continue raising myself. This bitch then uses a soft voice and, voice and goes, can we talk? <laughs> Listen, I hate when guys say, can we talk? You didn't want to talk when I was talking, okay? You didn't want to talk when I was talking and now you want to talk. No, no we, we cannot, cannot talk. talk. You told me to never talk to you again. I tried letting him know that I was pregnant. After I found out, I called him, texted him, even fucking emailed him, but he was MIA. He was at college living his best fucking life, not caring about anything. I saw his social media post. I knew he saw my messages of me asking him to call me because it's urgent. So fuck you, Superman. Bye, bitch. All right, anyway, it's Superman's wedding day. Grayson, my hot gay best friend, and Bella and I attend the ceremony. And the whole time, Superman is like throwing eye daggers at Grayson. So anyway, it's to the part where the preacher is, you know, is talking and Superman has the damn nerves to look at me and my Bella. And it was just so awkward. He keeps looking at us and everyone can see it. So Lily, his fiance, looks pissed and confused. And his family especially are like, what is going on? His sisters look pissed off. My adorable daughter is like waving excitedly at Superman and says <laughs> hi really loud. So Superman smiles and turns to Lily and tells Lily that he's sorry and he needs time to figure stuff out. And everybody in the crowd is like, what? Because this is a random kid. So why are you saying that? That's really suspicious. Superman then leaves the ceremony room and we're all shook. 
I get a text message from guess who? Superman texted me to telling him to meet at his apartment. Nope. Mm, this is getting crazy. Boy, bye. That's what I should have said. But I was curious. Wait, how this? My curious ass was like, okay. So Grayson drops me off and drops me and Bella at my parents. I change to my casual clothes and leave Superman's and leave to Superman's apartment. So I get there and it's awkward. We literally sat in his living room in silence for like 20 minutes before he said anything. And he told me that he was confused because he said that when he saw me again, he realized he wasn't over me. And he said that when he saw Bella, he knew that she was his. He said he doesn't want, he doesn't know what to do, but he wants to be in Bella's life. And I told him that we can co-parent. I mean, it is the 21st century, most people do that. He then asked me why I never told him about Bella and I got mad. Listen, I am heated and I like tried to, you know, I fucking tried to, but you never responded to my messages. He apologizes and asks if we can start over. I told him he can be in Bella's life, but our chapter has closed a long time ago. He then brings up his sisters and cousins and asked me why I never told them about their mean messages and threats. And I was like, how the fuck do you know about that? He then told me that his older sister got drunk last year and spoke about how happy that she was that he didn't end up with me. His older sister continued to say that I was a tough one and how I didn't say anything about the harassment. Superman apologized and asked me again why I never told him and I told him that I didn't want him to pick between his family or me or to even have a bad relationship with his family. He then looked at me and said, I would have chosen you over them. I would always choose you because I love you. And uh, I launched myself to him and we kissed. And the kiss was hot and steamy. And that led to clothes coming off. And that led us to having sex for hours. So anyway, it's the morning, 6 a.m. I snuck out and left. And it's been like a full day now. And he's trying to contact me. I'm not sure what to do. Any suggestions? What? Bruh. But we are all exhausted from your life. <laughs> like, that is too much action. Too much action. You ever had, like, have you ever had, like, a peaceful day? Do you ever, like, <laughs> sit in your backyard and, like, I don't know, read a book and not have, like, a whole fucking novella going on? <laughs> Bro, that's so intense. I don't know. I mean, if the sex was good. Nice. Also, he never really did anything bad. He was never a bad person. You know, if anything, she she was the who gave the voice recording. Yeah, that's what I want to know. Yeah, who See, sent him the voice recording? You know, I recording? thought the plot twist would be that Emma was the secret betrayer. She was jealous of their relationship, sent the voice recording. So what does she do? She goes has sex with Evan and has his baby. That's what I thought was gonna happen. That's not what happened. Bruh, 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 <laughs> bruh. Listen, I say you go over there and you have some more steamy sex. With your baby daddy. Because <laughs> why not? The next confession is going to be like... Yeah. Dude. And then figure out how to co-parent. Like, you know what? This could genuinely be a love story. Let's be optimistic. Because love is not dead. Love is alive. Love is very alive. Yeah, yeah. Is that right, therapist? Yeah. He's like, yeah. He said, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. <laughs> Or not. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Make sure to check out ExpressVPN, linked in the description, and use code BIS. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Or not. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>